If you remember way back at the beginning of our unit on estimation, we described uh, broadly two different paradigms for estimating parameters in statistics. And we basically studied the frequentist paradigm for this entire unit. So in the frequentist paradigm, we estimate parameters uh, using some, something like maximum likelihood estimation or the method of moments estimation procedure. And really what we were relying on in these procedures is the idea of resampling. So we imagine that we have a population and from that population we take in our course uh, a random sample, an IID sample, and our estimators are derived and studied from the perspective of if we were able to resample from this population many, many times and calculate the estimator for each one of those samples, what would the properties of that distribution of the estimator look like? For example, on average, would the estimator be correct? If so, the estimator would be unbiased. Or if we increased the sample size, right, took random samples, but each time taking a larger and larger sample from the population, would we have a reduction in the variance of the estimator that we calculate? Would the estimator tend towards the true value? Um, those are important properties of estimators. And, and we, if we think about resampling, we're really being frequentists. Now, Bayesians uh, take a different approach. And their approach is uh, not to treat parameters uh, entirely as fixed unknown quantities, but um, Bayesians actually think about putting a probability distribution over the parameter. And that allows them to uh, basically put a belief distribution. So most Bayesians don't think that parameters themselves are random variables but they admit that our knowledge of what a parameter uh, value actually is, is uncertain. And so we could model the parameter as a random variable. And so what Bayesians typically do is they start out with a prior distribution, which represents their degree of belief as to what the parameter might be uh, without the new evidence uh, being taken into account. And then, uh, Bayesians will gather a sample. That sample would be considered evidence uh, bearing on the parameter value. And then they would compute what you could call a posterior distribution for the parameter theta, given the evidence or the data that you just collected. And the posterior distribution represents your updated degree of belief in the parameter given the data. And from this posterior distribution, you could come up with an estimator. And the estimator might be the mean of that distribution, could be the mode of that distribution, right? Some number that you compute based on that distribution that gives you a single value meant to pinpoint or represent uh, the true value of the parameter. And then of course, from there, you could compute uh, not just a point estimator, but an interval estimator Bayesians call those credible intervals, and a credible interval is pretty easy to calculate once you have a posterior distribution. It's basically just an interval on the posterior distribution that um, captures, you know, 95% of the area underneath the posterior. And that would represent, you know, there's a 95% probability, assuming the Bayesian model was correct, that the true value falls within some interval on your posterior. So just to summarize, you know, the frequentist approach to estimation, uh, we thought of theta to be an unknown and fixed uh, value, and we used the notion of resampling to try to understand properties of estimators. And in the Bayesian approach, uh, parameters, well, most Bayesians think parameters are still fixed and they're unknown, but Bayesians consider parameters quantities whose 
variation can be described by a probability distribution. Basically, what they mean typically is that there's a subjective probability distribution that you could put over the parameter representing your uh, degree of belief in certain values of that parameter. So then Bayesians take a sample from the population and the prior is updated using Bayes' theorem uh, to obtain a posterior distribution. So let's get a bit more mathematical about this. So let's denote our prior distribution to be uh, pi of theta. So this tells us the probability distribution that we are placing over the parameter theta that could represent our degree of belief in different values of the parameter. So for example, suppose our parameter is uh, p, the probability of getting heads on some coin. Now if you had a coin in front of you and you didn't know whether the coin was fair or unfair, how it might be weighted in terms of landing on heads or tails, if you had no idea, you might place a uniform distribution from 0 to 1. And this would represent the fact that you put place equal likelihood that the coin is, you know, biased towards, say, tails, as it is biased towards heads. You're not making any claims about it being more likely that it's biased towards tails than towards heads, for example. But suppose that you actually thought, well, it's likely that it's fair and unlikely that it's biased towards heads and towards tails. In that case, you might place a distribution that looks something like this. And this says, well, I'm placing a lot of area under this curve, so a higher probability that the coin is close to fair and much less probability that it's very biased. So these are two different possible prior distributions. Maybe we call this pi 2 of p, and we call this one pi 1 of p. And how you choose your prior is really up to you, right? It's up to the researcher, up to the statistician. What are your prior beliefs uh, based on not having any evidence, not having flipped the coin? So the posterior distribution is the conditional distribution of theta given the sample x. And so we can write that as pi of theta given the data x. And the posterior distribution is equal to the likelihood. So we could write that in different ways, but the likelihood for Bayesians is written as uh, f of x given theta. So this is just the joint distribution of the data given the parameter value. Now this is the same thing that we have written as like this with the semicolon. And if you're interpreting this as a function of theta, you could write it L of theta, right? We've used that notation. And we've also, I think, looked at L of theta given x. All of these are the same thing. It's just a matter of how you interpret. Is it a function of x or is it a function of theta? Now, there's a subtle thing here that Bayesians allow for this to be uh, a given here, a conditional probability, because they treat theta as a random variable. And so you can condition on a random variable. Technically, frequentists don't treat theta as a random variable, and so it doesn't make sense for in the frequentist paradigm to make this conditional probability, because then you would be conditioning on something that's not a random variable. Some frequentists are a bit loose with this idea, but technically, you know, you shouldn't have conditioned on. Okay, so the posterior distribution pi of theta given x is equal to the likelihood function times the prior over theta divided by the integral 
of the likelihood times the prior and it's an integral with respect to theta. And if you think about this posterior distribution, then the denominator integrates out theta. So this is a posterior distribution over theta. Theta is the random variable. And the denominator is integrating out theta. So the denominator should not have a theta in it. So really all that the denominator is doing is providing uh, a normalization constant. Remember, probability uh, distributions have to integrate to one. And so what this denominator is doing is providing the right constant so that this entire distribution integrates to one. And that really means that the numerator is giving you the shape of the distribution. It's kind of the interesting part uh, it will tell you where a lot of your belief is now concentrated, belief in theta, given the data. And the denominator is really just moving that distribution up and down so that it integrates to 1. So often what we will do is, at, at least in the problems that we look at in this class, is we will just compute the numerator. And then if we recognize the form of the numerator, if it looks like one of our probability distributions on our table, but missing a constant, then we'll know what this integral is equal to. It's just equal to that extra constant. And we'll do an example of that in just a minute. Now the posterior distribution is what Bayesians use to make statements about theta. And theta is still considered a random quantity, at least random with respect to our, our belief. Um, and so we could use something like the mean of this distribution. So just take the expectation uh, or the mode, right? We can find the tallest point of that distribution, so maximize it. Um, and that can be used as a point estimate of theta. And then we could also find like different intervals along this distribution that trap certain areas and use those as what Bayesians call credible intervals.